morning. Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is Commitment Sunday, the day that we can say to God, thank you for all you've done for us. We have had a wonderful time this fall thinking about how to be faithful, hopeful, and loving. And we have one more of our wonderful Minute for Mission videos prepared by some of our own folks, this time highlighting one of the ministries of Second Helpings a wonderful ministry in town we are happy to be partners with. Won't you worship God? Good morning, Allisonville Christian Church, and welcome to all our visitors. Here are the announcements for the week of October 25th, 2020. We have two groups that are discussing the book, The Art of Neighboring by Jay Pothick and Dave Runyon. They meet Sundays at 4 p.m. or Wednesdays at 10 a.m., so feel free to join in the conversation. You can find the information needed to join the conversation in the weekly newsletter. This week, the Life Class will continue the conversation on resisting powers and systems in our world, asking ourselves, how do we resist? What are the most effective ways to resist? We'll discuss both Mohandas Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. and their methods of resistance. The Life Class meets at 9 a.m. on Sundays for an hour, so you'll be done in time for worship. Use the information on the screen to join, or you can find it in the weekly newsletter or the ACC Facebook group page. The ACC Book Club will meet this Tuesday, October 27th at 7 p.m. We have changed our meeting to Zoom, which we hope is easier for everyone to use. If you would like to join our group, contact Karen Bain and ask her to add you to the invite list. Our next book is The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. Today is Commitment Sunday. Our stewardship time has been very different this year, but we trust that together we will make good commitments for next year's ministry. It is our hope and prayer that sometime next year we will be able to gather again for hands-on ministry. There are three ways to make a commitment for next year. Fill out the card you received last week and mail it back to the church. Make your pledge online at allisonville.org pledge or come to our drive through commitment card drop-off this afternoon from 12 to 2 p.m. in the ACC parking lot. There is still a lot happening in our community of faith and fellowship, even as we keep the health and safety of all God's children in mind. Be sure to keep an eye on our weekly newsletter for the latest information, and you can also find more at Allisonville's Facebook page or visit our website at allisonville.org. Good morning, this is Tony Medlin, and I'm here in Broad Ripple at Flatwater Restaurant. Uh, having a visit with Jeff Hartfield, who is a line cook here at Flatwater, and also a graduate of the culinary program at Second Helpings. So we're interested in finding out how you first heard about Second Helpings and, and what led you to go there. Well, uh, a long story short, I was uh, attending church on a Sunday, and we had a guest pastor at the church and um, he was basically talking to guys who uh, went through the system, just got out, or going trying to change their lives. And he was talking about second helpings and how it could lead to a career in cooking. You know, get a little bit more financial uh, independence. And it was just something I needed in my life at that time because I was uh, running astray. I was in the streets hard, doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing. And second half was sound like something I needed to get myself into. So were you always interested in cooking before you went there? I always had some kind of inkling in cooking, you know, I used to I watch the uh, Food Network all the time and I used to try to mimic the meals once in a while. <laughs> so cooking's always been in my blood. How long um, was the program that you were in? How long did it last? Uh, Ten to twelve weeks. And that's that's the last of that type of program. I think they you know, like eight weeks now or something. Mm -hmm. They're real short now. <clears throat> but yeah, I think it was like 10 to 12 weeks when I went in. So it was pretty, a pretty intense program? Oh, very, very cramped. A lot of stuff was cramped in and tensed every, every, every other day, it seemed like. And the uh, instructor, Sam Brown, was, he's not there anymore, but he was a tough cookie. <laughs> no pun intended, huh? No pun intended. <laughs> Okay, so from Second Helpings, uh, how did you make your way to Flatwater, and how long have you been here? Uh, this is my seventh summer here. Wow. I've been here six years, with seventh summer, this is the seventh season that I've been here, and uh, I came in for a 
while I was still in school, the last week of school, we go off to different places, interview for jobs, whatever. I came here, interviewed, and I didn't think I was gonna get it, but it was a Saturday. Now we graduated, it was that Saturday. So we graduated that Monday, I think. So anyway, I was helping my brother clean a building, office building. We did the, we did that on weekends for part time. Uh-huh. And I got a phone call from Angie. She's like, you know, you got the job. So I graduated school on the twelfth and I started here March thirteenth. Uh, wow. That's great. That's great. So how do you how do you think uh second helpings and working at Flatwater has affected your life? Oh wow. <laughs> I know. Wow. <laughs> If uh, Flatwater and Second Helping were in my life, I would hate to say that I'd probably be dead right now. Wow. I, I would be dead. That's quite an Most endorsement. Definitely. Tony Medlin here again. Uh, when I was with Jeff at Flatwater, Jeff Hartfield at Flatwater, we really couldn't spend much time in the kitchen because the staff was getting ready to open for the day. So we had to get out of their way. But I want to thank him again for speaking with us and giving his endorsement to Second Helpings, a very strong endorsement. And I think in light of the racial injustice that has existed, especially lately, it it's an even stronger endorsement of the culinary program at Second Helpings. And he truly does feel like it saved his, his life. So that's that's a pretty strong statement to make, but I know that he sincerely feels that way. Thank you. Let us worship and praise our God. Let us worship, hallelujah. 
feel free to sing with me. Let us worship and praise our God. Let us worship, alleluia. Let us worship and praise our God. Let us worship, alleluia. Let us worship and praise our God. Let us worship, alleluia. Rise up, O saints of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of kings. Rise up, O saints of God, the kingdom tarries long. and in the night of wrong. Rise up, O saints of God, the church for you doth wait, with strength unequal to the task. Rise up and make it great. Lift high the cross of Christ, Tread where Christ's feet have trod. Come, sisters, brothers, in the faith, rise up, O saints of God. Good morning, everybody. Today I would like to share a story with you about the first time I ever tried to do a sport. Believe it or not, I grew up going through elementary school, middle school, high school, and even all of college up until my senior year of college before I ever joined a sport. Maybe that's not so hard to imagine. I'm more of a music guy, but we all have our talents and we all have the things we like to do, right? So I decided that for my senior year in college, I was going to really go out on a limb and try something that honestly kind of scared me a little bit. I was going to join the Eureka College swim team. <sighs> so I went to the first practice and then I came back the next day and week by week, I started to get a little bit better, but to be honest, I was never really good at it. And then time came for us to go to our very first tournament. So we all got on the bus and we drove a couple hours away. I was in my bathing suit and I was standing up on the platform and I'll never forget how horrible I felt and scared because I didn't know if I could do it. And before the ref blew the whistle for everyone to jump into the water, I burst out into tears and then I got off the platform and ran away. I wonder if you've ever had something happen like that to you before. You know, it feels good to do things we're really good at, right? But have you ever tried to really jump out on a limb and try something totally new to you? Something that maybe even made you feel a little afraid? Like, oh, can I do this? Well, today's scripture reminds us that God is always with us. Now, I know we say that all the time, but I think it's really important to remember that, especially when we're feeling really nervous or anxious about things, especially when we're trying something new and we know it might feel a little risky. We're not really sure what will happen. We are reminded that God, first of all, made you, God loves you, and God is with you. Even if we 
don't actually hop into the water and maybe next time when we eventually do get into that water. So today I thought it'd be kind of nice for us to remember that song I taught us earlier this summer about breathing with God and remembering that God is with us. So maybe next time you're feeling a little nervous, a little unsure about whether or not you've got what it takes to do what you need to do, you can remember this song. So why don't we sing it together a few times and then we'll close with a prayer today. All right. Breathe in, breathe out. God is with you, breathe. Remember? All right, why don't you sing it with me? Breathe in, breathe out. God is with you, breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. God is with you, breathe. All right, let's drink, sing it together one more time. And remember the fun breathing in and breathing out while you sing this song. That helps us slow down and remember God's with us too. Okay, let's sing it one more time with the breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. God is with you, breathe. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, thank you for always being with us even when we're anxious, even when we're not quite sure how we'll get through the next day or whatever task is ahead of us. Help us remember that you give us strength and that in Christ we can do all things. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Bye-bye. Good morning. Among our joys today, we celebrate with the Koble family the wedding yesterday of Rebecca Koble, daughter of Chris and Cindy Koble, and her, new, and her husband, Tommy Anturino, in Virginia. We pray for the newlyweds and for all who continue to support both of them and their family. Godspeed to you both. And we give God thanks for our 2021 stewardship campaign Faithful, Hopeful, Loving, which concludes today with Commitment Sunday. There are so many gifts of different kinds that each and every one of us bring to the community. So we thank God for all of those gifts and the diversity of people which God has made, each with just as important as the last person, something to bring to the table, something essential. So we give God thanks for next year and for the work that is still ahead with God's help. Among our concerns, please pray this week for Teresa Cochran, Bob Bates, Richard Shevitz, Zachary Snap, Mike McDonald, Sharon Gassaway, and Paul Ayers, all of whom are recovering from surgeries, and also continue to pray for Ali Reyes, who is recovering from an accident. We pray for Andy Holtzman, who is now in hospice care. We also lift up Jim and Carol and all of Andy's family in this difficult time. We continue to pray for Mary Caress, for Julie Wilson's mother, Linda Johnson, and her husband, Todd Wilson. We pray for Davis and Bev Goforth, and for Lori Corkin. We pray for all who are dealing with COVID-19 and for their caregivers in this time of uh, spiking of the virus. We continue to pray for all who are engaged in anti-racism work. And we pray for our elections, that they be peaceful, fair, and just. We pray for those in harm's way in Nigeria, protesting police brutality and corrupt governance for peaceful community-led solutions and for justice for those whose lives have been cut short. 
Our global prayer partners this week are in Guatemala. The Christian Ecumenical Council of Guatemala and the Christian Continental Network for Peace. After I offer a pastoral prayer, I'll invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer using sins. Let us go together to God in prayer. O liberating Lord, We seek your guidance and your presence among us yet again this morning. We ask that we may see you, that we may see your face and hear your voice, and that all who hunger and all who thirst and all who need healing may be granted that which they are seeking. And we are humbled that you would call us to be agents of healing, to be co-creators of justice and love and mercy for all are welcome. This morning we lift up those we have named this morning, those in difficult situations, trying to sort out lots of things right now in life those facing ongoing or new onset medical issues. We pray for ease of mind and for any anxiety they may have to be washed over by the peace which passes all understanding. You know us each by name, O God, and you call us trees of righteousness. You call us oaks. You are audacious to call us trees who are rooted and who grow and who have the power to create shelter for more of your living beings. So let us dig in deep, God. Let us remember that which keeps us fed and nourished, the model of Christ and the love he has shown and continues to show day to day the nourishment of the bread and the cup, of fellowship, of church community, and the chance to do better each day, empowered by your will and sparked by your grace. You call us oaks, O oh God. So this morning we give you thanks that you would create us as part of your grand creation calling us each by name and giving us tasks to continue building the kingdom, the kingdom, the realm of your love here on earth. Bless all the gifts we bring. And let us not forget that we are not alone, but it is the Christ who is with us. And together we pray the prayer your son has taught us saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance from our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, 
They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth bring forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear this word for the people of God. On this Commitment Sunday, when the world is not as we would wish it, we have before us a passage set in another difficult time, a time in which God's people are also given a powerful new name. They will be called Oaks of Righteousness, announced the third prophet called Isaiah. Oaks of Righteousness? That's not a biblical metaphor that really rolls easily off the tongue, is it? We are familiar in the Hebrew Scriptures with God calling Israel a light to the nations. And we know metaphors for the church like salt of the earth, light of the world, Christ in the world. But an oak tree? That so caught my attention that I looked it up and learned that the oak tree is a symbol of strength and endurance, which when you think about it is not surprising. Oak trees grow large and strong and are often very long lived, seemingly impervious to many things that kill other kinds of trees. When I lived in South Bend, there was a famous tree there called the Council Oak which stood in its spot for more than 400 years, surviving two lightning strikes in the 20th century and who knows how many before then. In the early 1990s, though, a tornado finally took it down. Under that tree, in 1681, the French explorer and trapper, La Salle, met with a council of the Potawatomi, Illinois, and Miami nations to form an alliance together and to grant LaSalle permission to explore the territory. That great oak was chosen as the meeting place because it was such a recognizable landmark. Even in 1681, it had already been standing there for about a hundred years. This little bit of local history helps us understand what the prophet Isaiah meant when he called God's people oaks of righteousness, imagining them strong and enduring over time. The text begins with some very familiar words, familiar because Jesus repeated most of this passage when he announced himself in his hometown synagogue of Nazareth in Luke 4. Here, Isaiah says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me, has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord 
to display God's glory. Why was Isaiah preaching about oppression and broken hearts? Who was mourning? Whose spirits were faint? Here in the last third of the book of Isaiah, we hear the voice of the prophet who ministered to those who had just returned after decades of exile in Babylon. Returned not to the wonderful city they remembered, but to a ruined Jerusalem. They found other people living in their houses and working their land. The city walls were crumbling, and worst of all, their revered place of worship, the great temple of Solomon, was in ruins. They knew they had to rebuild, but it seemed hopeless. How could they feel secure enough even to work without the protection of the walls? Where would they live? How would they provide for themselves? Where would all the resources they needed to rebuild come from? And who would lead them? Who would take charge in this community where now division and argument had become the norm? It was onto this desert of disorder and pain, of uncertainty and fear, that the words of the prophet fell like a gentle rain, bringing the spirit of the Lord to God's dispirited people. More than ever before, perhaps now we can fully understand the power of these words. In this moment, when many of us are discouraged or brokenhearted, when we're anxious about rebuilding, when we are counting losses too, the Lord God has sent me, Isaiah sang, to proclaim the good news, to comfort the brokenhearted, to bring wreaths of flowers and the oil of gladness to bless you. God has sent me to offer you a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. And you will be for the Lord a stand of strong oaks of righteousness, displaying God's glory in the midst of it all. Yes, Lord, bring it, bring it all, we chorus, just as our ancient parents in the faith must have done too. Bring that good news. Tell us about true liberty and praise and strong spirits in the Lord. Anoint us with gladness and deck us out with joy. Beloved church, we, along with so many others in our world, are in a difficult, painful, tragic time, having laid to rest more than 220,000 of our fellow citizens due to a virus we can innocently spread if we are not careful with one another. A time of great political contention when civility and kindness seem rare. A moment when our national sin of racism both plagues us and offers us an opportunity to work for contrition and reconciliation and healing, if only we will take it. Many of us are as discouraged and fearful as God's people who stood with Isaiah that day on the ruins of a life that they had known and lost. But take heart, Take heart, because the word of God, as spoken by a long-ago prophet, still sings today, reminding us that as God's own, we are called oaks of righteousness for the glory of the Lord, too. God has prepared us for this day. God has equipped us with the law of love through the life and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us a spirit of good news. It is Almighty God who calls us to be faithful and hopeful and loving even in the most difficult of times. Paraphrasing the scholar Lisa Davison, I say to you today, as with all authentic prophecy, these words from Isaiah 61, these words of hope and assurance and call, have continued to beckon people to ministry to be faithful to God until today, our day. As you heard, this passage ends in a doxology of praise to God, 
with Isaiah saying, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For God has clothed me in the garments of salvation, covered me with the robe of righteousness. It is the Lord God who causes righteousness and praise to spring up before the nations. Friends, God has already decked us out with all we need to fulfill our call as light and salt and Christ in the world, our call to be oaks of righteousness displaying God's glory. God will cause righteousness to spring up. Our job is to stand strong and firm in hope and love in all times. And by our commitment, we will display God's goodness God's righteousness and God's steadfast love. To commit ourselves to the active love of God in the world, especially now, especially now. Dear church, let us continue to put our roots firmly down into the will of God in all that we do and say and are. And let us accept the gifts we're given, the beauty of the oak's strength and resilience and endurance, and the glory of the robes of salvation freely given by God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, this Commitment Sunday, let us again commit our lives and all that we have to fulfill our call to be God's love in a hurting world. That alone would offer a display of God's glory as lovely and as strong as any mighty oak and then some. Are ye able, said the Master, to be crucified with me? Yea, the sturdy dreamers answered, to the death we follow thee. Lord, we are able, our spirits are thine. We hold the make-us like the around you with the sword to believe that spirit triumphs to commend your soul to God Lord we are able our spirits are the Whispers down eternity, and heroic spirits answer now as then in Galilee. Oh, 
as we come to the table to bring our gifts, as we always do, we thank God for the opportunity that we have to give and to compile all our gifts together to do God's good work in the world. And today I want to also lift up the joy of Commitment Sunday. I know you've received several mailings from us in the last few weeks. I hope you were able to really take a good look at this beautiful narrative budget that Pastor Doug designed for us, which gives you really a snapshot of all of the ways that we share what we are given with the world. And I believe you also got a commitment card to let us know what you were thinking you'll be able to give next year to help us to plan for what ministries we will do. We invite you to turn one of these in if you haven't already. I know that many have and we thank you for those. But we also invite you to either mail this in, you can do it online, it's very easy and simple to do that online, or today, this afternoon, between 12 and 2, you have the opportunity to do a drive through drop-off at church and pick up a homemade cookie on the way out. Let us give our thanks to God for all of these ways we can share. Our gracious giving God, O oh God from whom every good gift comes, please accept the gifts that we give to you today. Bless each one and help us to be wise in our use of them. May each gift bless someone in the world. In Christ's name, amen. At the Lord's table, we often talk about the ultimate gift that Jesus gave, his life. But the truth is, he was a model of giving for us every single day of his ministry. He poured himself out over and over again giving all of himself to the work at hand, to the work that God had given him in the world. And now we are taking his place in the world. That's some responsibility, isn't it? But somehow our God entrusted to us to finish the work that Jesus began. And so we give thanks that we are nourished each week at this table to be able to go out again and bless the world in Jesus' name. We remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples at the table, when he took bread and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you, take and eat. And in the same way after supper, he took the cup he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of many. So drink of it, all of you. Receive these good gifts of God, for you are each God's own. The living Christ is the host of this table, and he invites us all to come. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for our Lord Jesus Christ, for his life and death and resurrection, and for all the lessons we can learn from him on how to be a giving, loving person in this world. Bless this food to the nourishment of our souls that we will be renewed week by week to again be Christ's people in the world, your people in the world, dear God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us receive the meal. Amen.
just one word We are the free You are the Savior And we need your grace To rescue us We serve we offer an invitation to you. If you would like to join Allisonville Christian Church by transfer of membership or by confession of faith in Jesus Christ, we invite you to contact either me or Pastor Doug, and we will be happy to welcome you in. And now, dear sisters and brothers, let us commit ourselves one more time to be God's people in the world, to be Christ in the world, to be oaks of righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of God's Holy Spirit, we are up to the job. Let all the people say amen, amen.